Hey, a couple of things before we get started. The first is if you want the written version of this pattern, you can find links for it right here in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash ghosts. Also, this is from a live crochet along, which is why the style is kind of different. Um, sorry about the focus. It gets fixed before the pattern starts, but I know the style is a little bit different. I hope you don't mind it. If you want to join our live crochet along, crochet alongs, by the way, make sure to like and subscribe down below. Um, finally, uh, I am not normally dressed like this. Uh, this is because I'm in my Halloween costume. If you can guess what it is in the comments, uh, you get bonus points. Here's a hint. I normally have a potted plant with me and my eyebrows are more like... <laughs> All right, well, enjoy the pattern. Bye. Hey there, it's Louie, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet a very miniature micro ghost. This is part of my new mini Gurumi series where I crochet a whole bunch of patterns in 100 stitches or less with no sewing at all. By the way, you are live on our live stream today, so this is a live pattern and tutorial. There's a decent chance I will goof up in this pattern, and that's okay. We're gonna still be making it one stitch at a time, and I'll explain every stitch as we go. Now, if you wanna find more mini Gurumi patterns, like this little tiny goblin, or our whole series of miniature Amigurumi that are based on under the sea creatures, like octopuses and squids, you can find links in the description below, on screen now, or at clumpcrochet.com slash mini Gurumi. Um, okay, well, for this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. I'm going to use all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton. We're going to need the colors white for the main color, <laughs> and then we'll need a little bit of black thread for our smile. You'll need a very, very small amount of stuffing. Honestly, I just use spare thread for my stuffing because it's even easier than just actually using stuffing. Uh, and yeah, that's all the really materials you need except for the eyes. You will need six millimeter safety eyes for this pattern. Um, okay, so other than the materials, the tools you're going to need, we're going to be using a crochet hook. Come on, focus. There we go. Crochet hook size G4 millimeter in this video. It's my favorite size crochet hook to use with the yarn we're going to be using. Speaking of which, we're going to be using worsted weight cotton yarn from our brand new seasonal crochet kits that are available in the description below. Um, this yarn is my favorite to use for amigurumi, but you can really use any kind of yarn that you want to for these patterns. In, in fact, uh, using bulky blanket yarn might make a really cute um, larger ghost. That's actually maybe the size of our normal size ghost. Um, this is also a free pattern in our on our website. I'll link to that in the description as well. So if you want a different ghost, this is a nice one too. It actually also makes it into a finger puppet. Um, so we're going to be using worsted weight cotton yarn for this pattern uh, in colors white. You'll need some black thread obviously for the mouth. Um, and then we'll need, uh, we've got a crochet hook, we'll need a pair of scissors, and then we'll need a darning needle. You'll pretty much barely need this darning needle, like I said in the beginning. This pattern is all sewn, um, uh, is, is not sewn together. So there's nothing other than sewing it closed that you need to do. It does help to sew it closed using a darning needle with a crimped end, but you don't really, really need it. It's just kind of like nice to have. Um, okay, now, I do not technically have this pattern written down. So this is completely an improvised pattern. Uh, I think I remember how to make it. Um, and we're gonna be using this as our base as I go through to remember what the rounds are. But you get to kind of see my process for writing a pattern in this too. I kind of thought, you know what? I wanted to do this in the season. Maybe this is the last chance I'm gonna get to. So yeah, I, I hope you enjoy this. I'm sorry if this video is a little bit different than the ones I normally do and hello to the chat hi everybody in the chat watching along and crocheting along with us okay so we're gonna start with our white yarn and we're gonna be using a magic loop method now if you've never made the magic loop to, uh, method before I do have a full video tutorial where I show how to do this magic loop and additional magic loops uh, if you're not into this one that we're gonna be showing here um, if you want to find that tutorial, you can find links right up here or in the description or by going to clubcrochet.com slash magic loop. But this is my favorite way to do it. You want to take the yarn facing downwards towards the ground. You know what? Let me try to change the focus here so it doesn't go in and out of focus. Hopefully that will help. Um, you want it facing down towards the ground and pinch it with your thumb and middle finger like this. Now you want to go around your index finger Oh, sorry, you want it in your palm a little bit too. You want to go around your index finger and middle finger two times. 
What we're looking to do here is make an X on the front and two parallel lines on the back. Take this end attached to the ball and the little tail end here and go in between your ring and pinky finger, close it in like that and it'll keep everything closed together. We're gonna take our crochet hook, get the back of your yarn, uh, your hand facing you and take your crochet hook, go under that first bar and hook onto the second one like this. Pull that second bar under the first one and loop it around like so to create a loop on the end of the crochet hook. Go over this first bar here and then hook onto the second one. You kind of want to go over the first one and then you might want your finger to help guide the yarn over the crochet hook like that. Take the yarn that's now hooked onto the crochet hook and pull it through the loop on the hook. The easiest way to do that is to twist it slightly like this and scoop it. So I kind of scoop it like that and pull and twist all at the same time. So oops, like this, twist, scoop like that to get it through that. That's going to create something that we call a chain stitch, which will keep everything all pulled together and you can pull it off of your fingers now. Okay. So for round one of our little miniature ghost, this pattern is going to be worked in the round without turning. So every round, we're just going to work into the stitches that we made in our first round. For round one, we're just going to do eight single crochets into the magic loop to get started. So we're going to take our crochet hook here, go into the center of the magic loop, yarn over with the end attached to the ball, pull it under the loop, then going over, yarn over again, and pull through two loops, one and two. We're going to do that eight times to create eight single crochets into the magic loop. That right there is going to be called a single crochet. So we'll go one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I really should have said at the, at the top that if this is your first crochet pattern, um, I don't suggest doing this as your first crochet pattern. Uh, if you need extra help here, go to crocheting101.com. That's my completely beginner series that'll help you learn the basics of crochet. That might be more helpful before you get into this, but that might be a little too late. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> okay, now before I go too much further, I do want to add just a little bit of yarn in a different color that we can use as basically a stitch marker. This will help us keep track of where the ends of the rounds are, which will just help us in general as we go through the pattern. Take a little tail end of yarn of, in a different color and go straight through the center of the magic loop like this. So we're going to use our blue here. And then once it's through that center, you can pull the tail end from the beginning of our magic loop tight and it'll tighten around that color. And that way it'll help us keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. As we go through this pattern, I'm going to fold this over the stitches like that. And it'll create this, this little line that'll keep us uh, on track as we go. Okay. And hello again to the chat to the chat. Hello, pick and poke designs and leaf sauce and Paula. I hope you guys are doing great. And thank you so much for joining the live stream. Okay, so next up, we are going to do round two. Now for round two, we're going to do three single crochets, and then increase one time and repeat that two times total. That's going to bring your stitch count up from eight stitches, which is what we should currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yep up to 10 stitches around. So that's what we're aiming for at the end of round two. So as we go around here, we're gonna look at the top of our crochet here and you'll see how you have like two, I'll use my needle to help point this out. You see how you have two little loops here. You wanna make sure that your crochet hook, uh oh, I'm gonna sneeze. All right, uh, <laughs> we're gonna make sure that we're under both of these loops simultaneously as we go. It just makes things a little bit cleaner as you go instead of just working into the back of the front loop. So we're gonna take our crochet hook, go under both of these loops, and we're gonna do the following repeat. The repeat is uh, three single crochets and then one increase. An increase just means that you put two single crochets into the same stitch. That's all it means. Um, so. As I go though, we're gonna take this tail end and place it over our crochet hook too because we wanna work around this tail end throughout this entire round. This'll keep everything locked into place. We're gonna yarn over with the end attached to the ball, not this tail end. 
and then we're gonna pull it under the stitch with a twist and scoop. And then going over the stitch and over this tail end, we're gonna do our first single crochet of round two. Again, round two's repeat is three single crochets. One, two, and three single crochets. And then an increased stitch right after that, right here. An increase again just means two in the same stitch. So there's one, and into the exact same stitch will be two, like that. So four, or I mean five total. One, two, three, and then four and five to be that increase. Now we're gonna repeat that process again to get to the end of this round. Th three single crochets, one increase. Here we go. This will be one, two, and three. Okay, now we're gonna do one increase here at the very end to finish up round two. One and two in the same exact stitch. Okay, that's gonna be the end of round two. I'm gonna take this tail end here, fold it up like that, and we're gonna ignore it to act as our little stitch marker there. All right, so now we're on to round three. Round three is super ultra easy. It's just gonna be a single crochet into every stitch around. Nice and easy, and also a very good opportunity for you to count your stitches. So you just wanna do, um, by the way, I keep holding this upside down like this because that's actually how we're making it. We're kind of making it from the top to the bottom. So it's kind of easier for me to see where I'm at on, on the finished piece if I hold it upside down. So that's why I'm holding it upside down consistently. So we're just doing one single crochet for every single stitch around, pretty easy. So we're just gonna single crochet all the way around. And hey, as you're watching here, um, both this is both a shout out to the live stream and to anybody watching this video afterwards. If you like this video, please like it down below. It's a really good way to support this channel for completely free. Um, yeah, and make sure to subscribe. If you subscribe and hit the little bell icon, you'll get notified when we do our live crochet longs, like what's happening right now. Say hello, chat. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. Um, we are currently live on YouTube. Um, right after we finish this ghost, we're going to be crocheting another ghost uh, live and getting everybody's feedback and ideas as we make our ghost to customize it. So, yeah, you should subscribe. Okay, so that's going to be the last of our 10 single crochet stitches for round three. Now we're on to round four. For round four, we're gonna do one single crochet stitch and then we're gonna do our arm right here. Our arm's gonna be made with a stitch that I'm still trying to come up with a name for. It's kind of like a micro bobble stitch. The problem is I already have a mini bobble stitch, uh, which is like three bobbles together, um, but it's also kind of like a double crochet two together. So I'm gonna show you what that means in just a second, but we're gonna do one single crochet and then the arm, and then we're going to do one, two, three, four single crochets, and then the other arm, and finish this up by doing one, two, three single crochets to get to the end of the round. So that's one, arm, four, arm, three. Is that right? I think so. We're gonna figure it out as we go though. So let's pull up our stitch marker here and get started on round four, right? One, two, three, yes, four. So we got one single crochet as normal, okay? Just that one's easy squeezy. One single crochet as normal, and then the arm. So the arm is gonna be a double crochet, two together into one stitch. For that, we're going to yarn over and then go into the stitch right here. Then we'll yarn over again, pull it under the stitch like that, and then we'll, you should now have three loops on your crochet hook. My blue yarn is totally getting in my way. So I'm just gonna pull that out just a little bit so that it doesn't get in our way. Okay, so you should have three loops on your crochet hook now. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through just two of those loops. One and two like that. Then we're going to repeat that exact same process of what we just did again into the same exact stitch. So we'll yarn over, go into the same stitch that you just worked into right here yarn over again and pull that under the stitch. And then going over the stitch, we'll yarn over and only pull through two of these loops, one and 
two. Okay, so now you should have three loops on the hook. One, two, three. To finish up an arm, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Easiest way, twist and scoop to get through all those stitches. And that's gonna be how to make the arm. You can kind of see how it's like two double crochets put into one stitch. It just makes this little tiny bobbly kind of look. Um, usually I do bigger bobbles for my larger projects like on our, um, on our full size ghost here, I'm using a full size bobble stitch, which is that repeat four times instead of just two. Um, but this pattern, it's really tiny, so you only need two. Um, okay, so we got our single crochet, our double crochet two together, um, and then we're going to single crochet four times to get to the end of the round. I mean, to our next arm, rather. So four times, one single crochet per stitch for the next four stitches. There's one and two, three, and four single crochets. One, two, three, four. Now we're gonna do another arm right here. Uh, same exact way. There's nothing tricky about this second arm. Again, you yarn over for an arm, go into the stitch, yarn over again, and pull it under the stitch. Then going over, yarn over and pull through two. One and two. And then we're gonna repeat that process again. Yarn over into the stitch, yarn over and pull it under the stitch. Going over, we'll yarn over and pull through two, one and two. Once, you're, once you've done that, those two repeats, you should have three loops on the hook. We'll yarn over and pull through all three loops with a twist and a scoop like that. Okay, now to finish up this round, we just need to do three single crochets to get to the end of the round. One, two, and three. And that is gonna be the end of round one, two, three, four. So that's the end of round four. We're actually kind of almost done. We only have two more rounds to go. And as you can see, it's, very, it's a very tiny pattern. It's really quick to make. Um, okay, now before I continue going too much further, I'm gonna take this tail end and pull it out of one of the stitches. I'm gonna go with this stitch here. This is technically the back of our piece. So it's kind of easiest to go in with your crochet hook, yarn over with this tail end and just pull it through that stitch right here. We're gonna use this for double knotting to the end at the very end of our piece. And it'll just keep everything sewn together so that we don't have to worry about anything coming apart. Um, okay. Uh, loving the cat cam. Thank you, Ellie. I appreciate that. Okay, so next up we are on round five, I believe. For round five, it's pretty easy. All you need to do for round five is just do a single crochet for every single stitch around. The only tricky part of round five is when you get to the arms right here, it can be kind of hard to see where to put the crochet hook. If you look at the top here, you can see how we've got these two V's right there. That's where you wanna put your crochet hook. It can be a little bit tricky to see though, but right like this. It's kind of easiest, see how I poke downwards towards into the body? That's kind of easier than poking it like up like that. And then just single crochet as normal. So we'll just keep going around and single crocheting. Here we go. So this is just 10 single crochets all the way around. Okay, just a few more. Probably should silence the music in the background, but whatever, I might get a copyright strike. That's all right. <laughs> all right, so there's gonna be the end of round five and our round of just single crochets around. And you can kind of see how our piece is coming together. I just pulled my crochet hook out just so I could show you. I always like to pinch the arms. So notice how I'm like pinching the hand like that and I'm pushing it out from the inside. That's because I want it to be as pronounced as I can so that it's like sticking out just a little bit more. Okay, so now we are on actually our very last round of our piece before we add our eyes and our face and stuff like that. And for this last round, all we are going to be doing is adding a small frill to the end of our piece. Just like, see how it's got like this little frill at the end? That's all we're building. So to do our little frill, all we need to do is chain one like that yarn over and pull it through the loop and then slip stitch into the front loop only that is the most important part here 
you want to work only into the front of these loops. So not under both of them like this. You only want to work into this first one right here. We're going to be using that back loop to sew everything closed at the end. So we want to chain one and then slip stitch, which I'll show you in just a second, into this front loop only. For a slip stitch, we're going to take our crochet hook, go into that front loop only, just like that. And then we'll yarn over and pull it through that stitch and then through the loop on the hook. That is called a slip stitch. It just makes a nice, clean, like very tiny stitch. Okay, so we're gonna repeat that process into every single stitch around. So let's do it again. Chain one, front loop only, slip stitch. Front loop only, and then slip stitch. Okay, let's do it again. Chain one, front loop only. The easiest way to go through the front loop only, I've noticed, is poke up. Instead of poking down, we're gonna be poking up. So go right from the bottom here, and poke straight up, and it'll help you only get into that front loop. And then slip stitch one. Let's keep doing that all the way around. And hey, if you need extra help um, here and you're having a difficult time with this pattern or any of our patterns, um, you should consider, oopsies, I forgot to do a chain one between our slip stitch there. There we go. You should consider checking out our Facebook group or our Discord channel. You can find links for either one of them in the description below. Or join the live crochet along like our friends here in uh, the chat, which you can see right there. Um, they are all in our live crochet along, and that is also a great opportunity to come and ask any questions that you might have throughout either this pattern or, or any pattern that I make. Um, and I can help you live on video and show you how to actually uh, do any kind of crochet thing that you need help with. It doesn't have to be necessarily um, help based on the crochet pattern that we're making live. You can do any, I can help you out with any crochet advice that you might need. Chain one and front loop only, slip stitch one, and that is gonna be the end of our final round of our ghost. And you kind of see how he's got this little, I got this little skirt, this little dress there. Okay, the last thing we wanna do is we want a somewhat long end, I would say about like that long right there, and we'll just cut the yarn. Um, that actually might even be more than we need. Cut the yarn like that and just pull it all the way through your stitch like that, and we're gonna hide this end in in just a second. Um, before we do that though, we need to start, we need to pull out our stitch marker so because we don't need it anymore, and we need to add our face. Um, for our face, you don't have a lot of room to work with the face here, but there's still just enough room, I find, to add a really cute little smile and a little face. So what we'll need first are our six millimeter eyes. I'm gonna be using our bottle of eyes here. This is available in the shop if you wanna get one, but we're just gonna need two of these eyes. I'm using six millimeter because I find it's best. I You can use smaller eyes. You can also use larger eyes. I would say larger eyes is kind of wild looking. It looks like, ah, you know, but you can do you. <laughs> um, we're going to be using six millimeter eyes today. So the first eye is going to go right next to one of these arms. So you can kind of see, if you look at these arms, you'll see we have like a stitch like right here next to it. The eyes are going to go one up from that so that they're a little bit higher up. So I like to put one eye right here and then one eye right up, up, right there. So right here. In the written instructions, once I put the written instructions on the website, um, I will include like eyes go into this stitch and this stitch, but this is kind of being improvised. So it's a little bit, you know, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> okay, so the eyes will go right there. I actually kind of think it's really cute without the mouth, but we're gonna add a mouth in just a second. Before we add the mouth, we do need to lock the eyes in place. It can be a little tricky to get this locking mechanism on the eye because everything is just so small. But what I kind of find helps best is you use your crochet hook and kind of like poke your eye up a little bit like that to angle it. And then you can kind of get the backing on there. It just helps just very slightly to get uh, the locking mechanism on the eye a little bit cleaner that and like that okay all right 
It's avocado. I will try to make an avocado tutorial. That is definitely something that is in the that will be in the works eventually, um, but not in this video. All right. <laughs> Next up, we want to add a mouth. The mouth's actually really easy. You just need a little bit of a black thread. You don't actually need too much of it. Um, that's probably enough. If you don't have black thread, what you can also do is actually use yarn and split it. So for example, here's our blue yarn that we were using as a stitch marker that we don't really need anymore. What you can kind of do instead, if you have good yarn for this, is you can kind of split it into its various sections and just use one of these splits as your thread. Especially, this is especially apt with our cotton, uh, amigurumi cotton yarn, because it's made, each one of these are essentially one of these threads put together. So it's it's very, we, we use really, really high quality cotton so that it's split into different uh, little, um, they're called um, plies. Uh, this one's got a multi-ply thread. And so each one of these threads actually works as crochet thread uh, for adding embroidery like what we'll be using for the mouth but that's only if you don't have actual black thread uh, if you get any of our kits they do come with the black thread though so that works also um, okay so we're gonna thread this onto our needle and I always just like to thread it onto the needle and then just twist the needle like this I don't sometimes people like to knot it I don't really think that's that necessary we're gonna take the needle come out through the stitch just to the left or the right of the eye like one of these sides right here and there's there's kind of like two ways to do this um the way i like to do it is just come out go right across into the opposite stitch on the other side right here and then come down and that's going to create this flat little line which already makes a pretty cute uh ghost but if you want to make it more of a smile you want to come up with the inside of the needle in the stitch under that so like right here I actually find that if you can, it's a little tricky, but if you can, there's this little spot that's right above, you see where that black dot is? It's right above that black dot right here. If you can get through right there, it just makes the smile just that much cuter is what I've found. So I'm gonna take my needle, my thread came off, but it's okay. I'm gonna get my needle in position first. So see how instead of coming out right here, I'm gonna try to come out like that, like in the white above it I think that's gonna look a little bit cleaner okay now that my needles in place go ahead and thread the yarn if I can oh thank you amaze feed in the chat I appreciate that okay we're gonna pull it through like this there we go okay now what we want to do is we want to go around the black bar like this we want to take our needle go just around that black bar and then back into this same exact space that you came out with this black thread like that. This is gonna pull the smile down into more of a V shape and more of an actual smile like that. And then all you need to do is just double knot these two ends on the inside and then you have got a little adorable smile. This is the smallest smile that I can make um, or at least that I have made so far. Go ahead and double knot it like that. Okay, you can cut this or you can just stuff it up with it. I'm going to go ahead and cut it just nice and short there and throw that to the side. All right, the very last thing we want to do for our little tiny ghost here is sew everything closed. Um, the best way to sew it closed, uh, obviously we're going to stuff it as well, but um, sometimes I actually like to set it up to sew it closed and then stuff it. It's just kind of like, I don't know, just what I like to do. Um, there's a few different ways you can sew this closed, but I think the easiest way, just thread this end on a needle. And we're going to go first and make a what I call a hidden end so that the end of our yarn here kind of looks like the end of the end uh, edge here. Um, this is just a way to make it less like this. So this is kind of a mistake I made where I didn't do this hidden end. And you can kind of see he's got like a little ghost butt. It's kind of cute, but not really what I'm aiming for. Um, ghost butt that could be a band name anyhow we're gonna go around the outside of the next stitch in our piece so we're gonna go around the back of it like this under the two loops just like that and then we're gonna come out and go straight in through where this this end is coming out of so we're gonna take our needle go right into where that end is here and then go into the body 
and just into the back of a, just a few stitches. It really, you don't need to go through a lot. That's probably just fine. And then we're gonna kind of pull everything a little tighter and that way it'll kind of simulate the end of the piece so it makes the end a little bit hidden. Once you're done, done with that, you're going to have all these back loops on the inside that we're gonna be using for sewing everything closed. Um, really quick before I do that though, let's stuff it just a little bit. The easiest way to stuff these uh, stuff these up is either using a, um, a, a pencil with an eraser or just a little stick will work too. You can use just extra thread. So we can just use our, our, um, our end from our stitch marker here, roll that into a little ball and stuff that into the body. The goal here though, is we're getting trying to get above those little eyes. So we're gonna go into the body here. I'm actually gonna use a little stick because I think it'll be a little bit easier than our pencil. And I'm just gonna stuff it in and try to get under the eyes like that so that it's above where the eyes are so that the head is actually stuffed up. Um, we'll go ahead, we'll stuff these little black threads in there too, just because that way we don't have to throw them away. You know, waste not, want not kind of thing. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to roll it into a little ball here. If I can. Hello, BLK Rose. Thank you so much for finding us. BLK Rose says that they've been looking for this channel forever and how you lost it, you don't know. Well, you know what you should do? You should uh, go to the website and then add it to your homepage on your phone. That's what I think. All right, I'm just gonna use a little bit of this stuffing. Honestly, actually, this little bit of stuffing is probably all we really need. You do not need much stuffing for this, like really at all. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, now all we need to do is sew this closed. Sewing it closed can be a little bit tricky because we actually have more stitches than you'd think for sewing, uh, for using to sew it closed. If you count backwards from where this end is right here, you'll see all your stitches. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right here. Easiest way to sew it closed, I found, go in through the front of these back loops on the bottom, and then come right out through the next one like this and we'll just keep weaving in and out. Once you do one, you kind of just do it in one fell swoop though. So you can kind of just go down and then poke your needle out like that. Okay, so down and out like so. Okay, down, oops, and then out. And by the way, if you're looking in the little screen there and you're looking at me right now and you're like, why is he all dressed like a Poindexter? I am currently in my Halloween outfit. Um, I am wearing, uh, I'm supposed to be Seymour from Little Shop of Horrors. And I think I look pretty good. Uh, it really helps when I have my little, my little piranha plant. Oopsies. That fell out. Here's what the piranha plant looks like. Anyhow, I just want to show you that real quick. Okay. So we're pulling this out here, and now we've sewn through all those front, uh, all those back loops, right? You wanna take this end, go straight into the middle, and come out where your tail end is. We're gonna use that for double knotting these two ends together. Come out like that, and then we're just gonna pull it really tight. You can actually kind of pull it tight from this side. Just pull, and you'll see how the hole just closes, and then pull it straight on the inside. I always like to hold this back part like that, just grip that back part and then pull it tight. That way this back doesn't get locked in too. But you're just trying to get it closed enough. So that looks pretty good, pretty well closed. And then I'll just double knot these two ends together and we'll cut it nice and close and stuff it on the inside. So we're just gonna double knot, there's one and two like that. And we'll go ahead, cut it really close. And then I just like using the end of my needle to help kind of stuff that knot back into the piece like that, like that. And then I just kind of like squish. I, I always like to skew the little, his little frill like that. And maybe add a keychain or something. But that is how you crochet an ultra miniature ghost in less than 100 stitches and with no sewing at all. Um, uh, Okay, so that is 
that is pretty that is pretty adorable again if you have any questions at all please let me know in the comments down below check out the live streams join the discord or the facebook groups all of those would be great um if you want to check out more mini grooming patterns i've got a whole bunch of other ones um here let me actually show you some on screen we've got a bunch of miniature whales and stuff here you can see a little orca um we have this little miniature goblin that we're currently working on i'm actually testing it so if you're looking to test out a new pattern um check that one out here, let's put it back on the autofocus um, we also have some miniature candy corns, which are really cute. We've got some miniature skulls, which I'm like absolutely obsessed with. These ones are only made in 40 stitches. It's like, they're crazy tiny. Here's a little pink one with a little loop for putting it onto like an earring or something. I'm obsessed with these ones for sure. Um, here, I'll put the little blue skull on screen and then what else we've got little uh squids and octopi anyhow you can find all of those at clubcrochet.com slash mini garumi or at mini um thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoy this video please consider liking and subscribing down below and now we're gonna jump back over to the live crochet along where we're gonna start crocheting another ghost uh and we're gonna vote on what kind of ghost to make. Um, thanks again for watching. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking. Bye. This is how I usually end. Bye.